Hey, what's up guys? Cooking with Caden here, and today we're going to be making pulled pork out of this Boston butt. So, I have a very first new intro I've been working on, so I want you guys to tell me what you think about it in the comments right now once you see it. Alright, so I know I'm a little late on this video, so on top of this video, I'm going to be adding another video next week. So stay tuned for this. So, to begin this video, we're going to start off here by scoring the fat. So, when scoring the fat, you don't want to score the meat, but th the reason you score the fat is to help render the fat. Essentially, rendering means to help boil down and melt. To start off, we're going to go on a lengthways, and then we're going to go by the diagonal. So, after you get a cross hitch pattern, you're going to season your meat with some salt. So the reason you want to use salt first is because it lets you directly control exactly how much salt is going onto your piece of meat that you're cooking. When you're using a rub that has salt in it, you can only control how much salt is in the meat rather than how much rub there is. So if I just use salt and no salt in the rub, I know exactly how much rub I want on it and I get exactly how much salt I also want on it. So that's the advantage to doing it that way. After we use our salt, we're going to grab some mustard. We're going to rub the piece of meat with our mustard. So, our mustard is not used for flavor whatsoever. It is called a binder. The reason for a binder is to help bind our rub to our meat. You will not taste any mustard. I actually don't like mustard all too much. So, when I tell you that you will not taste the mustard, you have to believe me. So, you want to add this mustard on all sides of the meat, including the fat. And you want to just rub it around, rub, 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 rub. This is the only time you want to rub anything on your meat at this stage of the, uh, the game. So, once we do this, we're going to be having our rub here, which consists of garlic powder, paprika, cayenne pepper, and onion powder. It's a really simple rub. Oh, and black pepper, too, of course. So, it's a really simple rub. And you can basically add anything you want in here, except for salt. I would not recommend adding salt to your rub, as I discussed earlier. The last thing you want in your rub is salt. So, now that we have our rub, we're going to sprinkle it on gently. But, you want to avoid rubbing in your rub. So, don't rub your rub. If you have any takeaway from this video, I've learned this too. I used to rub my rub, and... Basically, it makes it pasty. You don't want to rub any rub you use. You can pat it like I'm doing here, but you don't want to rub it down. The reason I'm patting it is just to help it cohere to the skin of the meat or just to the meat in general. But when you rub it, it makes it paste and it doesn't develop a nice enough bark. The term bark is used in barbecue to describe the outside of the skin of a meat after smoking it for a long enough time around usually four hours and was three to four hours is when your bark starts to truly develop so we really want to make sure we get all sides good until we think it's packed on the seasoning here is packed on as much as we can really add because like i said i like to add as much seasoning to develop the most bark you can really imagine so there's little gaps in between these pieces of meat. You want to actually open up your pork butt and put the to seasoning inside of there too. So no spot is empty. So now we're going to be adding it to the smoker at 275 degrees Fahrenheit for three hours. So as you can see here in a second, my smoker is running a little hot. So we're going to be opening it up. This is the three hour mark. So if you see the bottom of this meat, this is exactly what you want to see. So I actually left to go watch a basketball game in here in a second. So I smoked it for three more hours and it looked like this. I overcooked it a little bit on the bottom as you can see here, but now it's ready to shred. As you can see from pulling out this bone, this is your instant read thermometer. Once this bone is ready, you want to shred this meat and it should look like this. So that leaves you at the end of this video. Um, once again, I'd like to thank you for watching and I'm sorry that this video didn't turn out as, as good as I would like, but I would still like to show you a recipe or something that I can show you how to make and put it out on my YouTube channel. I'm trying to be 
somewhat consistent with my uploads. I try to do it once every two weeks at least. But since I didn't hit the two week mark last week, I'm going to add a new video next week. So tell me if you want to see three separate videos or one really long video. I'm going to be making Asabuco, Risotto, and Chocolate Lava Cake. So I can either do three separate videos or do one longer one. I'm not entirely sure how long that video will be. If it is above 30 minutes, I am going to separate the videos just because I don't want you guys watching a 30 plus minute video. But if you made it this far, um, I want you to comment something that has to do with cats. It doesn't have to be the same thing, but I just watched P Puss in Boots. So I'm filming this after the movie. I actually really enjoyed it, but mm, comment something with cats in it and I'll be sure to see those comments. Thank you guys very much for watching. Have a wonderful rest of your day.